Hey there, welcome back. So really quick video today, I'm just gonna be answering some questions the community has raised. So stick around and let's see how it goes. Hey there, so this is gonna be a, probably a pretty quick video. I don't know, we'll see. But there are some questions that people have asked that have been asked to me multiple times. So I thought it was a good idea to maybe uh, put out this question and answer video uh, just in case other people have the same questions so that they can they can hear my thoughts on it too. Um, the first question I often get is, how do I make my room transfers work for a differently sized room? Right now all of my, my rooms here are 25 tiles by 25 tiles. And what if you want, say, this to transfer into a significantly larger room where maybe you want it to be 35 tiles wide and maybe 40 tiles tall. So you want it to be an extra five tiles on each side and you want it to be 15 extra tiles up on top. So you want a nice, great big room. So the way that you can do that is, let's take a look at our room transfer script here. Um, instead of having a camera change, we would create two vector twos in place of that one vector two. So we'd have a public vector two camera min change and a public vector to camera max change. Um, you probably do this in a vector four, but I mean, it, it'll be fine. Then when you're doing your on trigger enter, you can do your min position plus the camera min change and the max position plus the camera max change. That way, when you are implementing it in Unity, you can say that you want your min to go left five, your min x to go left five, your max x to go right five, and you want your uh, max and min y to both go up 40 or 25 or whatever it is. So, um, or you want your max y to go up 40 and you want your min y to go up 25 so that you can have different values there because you're changing the size of the room. And that's, that's how you would do it, is rather than having just the one vector, you'd have two. So let me comment these out so I can go back to how I was. So that's how you can make it so that you have different size rooms. Um, the next question that I get a lot is, <laughs> could you please upload or update your Git project? And yes, yes, I will try to. Um, I'm not very good at doing stuff like that. I'm really bad at stuff that, uh, to me, seems seems little, but I understand that to everybody out there, it's not little. Um, so I'll try to get better at uploading my Git. Um, okay, another question I get a lot is, um, what am I gonna do after this? And when this project is finished, which probably won't be until January of next year, I have my schedule set up and it looks like January of 2019 is when I'll get this uh, tutorial series finished. But when this is done, and then I'll put out a, a poll in my Discord and on Twitter, and uh, that's where I can find out uh, what project you guys want me to do next. If you want me to do you know, like a JRPG or like a, like a top-down 3D Diablo-like or another puzzle game or, you know, whatever. I'll let people vote on it, and then that's how I'll decide. So that's what we're going to do next. Um, another question I get a lot is, are, am I going to cover specific topics? I have a schedule that I've made that I have a link to in the description below. You can take a look at, if you think something should be added to the schedule, um, feel free to request it. But my whole idea behind this was not to cover every single aspect that somebody might want in a game like this, but rather to cover the basics and then maybe give you an idea of how you would go about filling in the rest of the gaps on your own. So if you have something that you'd like to see added to that schedule, you can certainly ask, but um, just know I'm just trying to do what I think is the, the base. So. There we go. Um, sometimes I get asked what are the weird beeps that sometimes make it through the edit that you can hear in the background. Um, that's because I teach in a school and uh, I record these on my prep period or during lunch or after school. And sometimes they make announcements during those times. So if you ever hear a weird beep in the background, that's, uh, that's what that is. Um, okay, so another question I got was I've only ever done this with one enemy. So let's say that I take my enemy here and I'm gonna duplicate it and make another one. Uh, we'll see something kind of weird happen when I go into their uh, their attack range here. 
and we'll talk about how we can fix that. So, <laughs> see how they kind of, there they go. So they not, not only did they knock each other back, but they also gave each other damage. So let's fix that. Now I'm gonna go to my log, and now we're gonna be using the layer. So right now the layer is set to default. I'm gonna add a new layer, and I'm gonna call this enemy. Enemy. And then back to my log, put my log on that layer, and I'll put my other log on that layer as well. And now, um, you, there's a way that you can tell Unity that if things are on this layer, just ignore physics between them. To do that, you would go to Edit, uh, Project Settings, Physics 2D, and then over here in the inspector, there's this little um, matrix that you can use to tell what you want to interact with what. So, enemy is going to interact with default, transparent, ignore, da da da, but I don't want it to interact with other enemies. So now, if I hit play, I can uh, see that those two enemies will not interact with each other. Let me get them together here. There we go. See, they would have been already knocking each other around, but now I can kind of zoom around them. And some people don't like this because it has them kind of overlapping, but I don't know. It, I guess it's personal choice, but um, what you could also do if you wanted to, uh, if you didn't want them to be able to overlap like that, is if we go to the, uh, I think the log script maybe, maybe it's the knockback I need to look at. When we're um, moving them back, change anim, nope, so it's the other one. So in knockback, when we're checking, um, we could add something here to check to see if this object is enemy and the other object is enemy. Um, but that, I don't know, that seems like it would be a little little complicated. So, I mean, there, there are ways that you can get these two to just interact with each other, but not cause that knockback. Um, so, yeah, there we go. Another question I got on the last video was, um, is there a way for me to do that context glue without having to use one signal? And yes, there absolutely is. Um, sometimes when I do stuff, I have a tendency to just go forward with my first idea and not stop and think about what the heck I'm doing. Um, so this is one of those situations where I need to stop and think about what the heck I'm doing. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up my context clue script here and I'm gonna add a new bool. I'm gonna call this uh, public bool, uh, we'll call this context active. And then um, instead of having an enable or disable, I'm instead going to have a public void check. Or and that's not to check, let's do change context. So change context. And then what this is going to do is it's going to change the value of that bool. So we're going to start with false. And we're going to say context active dot. Um, I want to change it from true to false. So I'm going to say is equal to not context active. So if it's false, that'll change it to true. If it's true, that'll change it to false. And then I want to say if context active then I'm going to do context clue dot set active true else context clue dot set active false. There we go. So I'll just save that. Um, I'll go back into Unity here and I can remove one of these context clues. Oh, no, that's not what I meant to do. I can remove one of these signal listeners. Good Lord, Mr. Taft. So as soon as it's done thinking, there we go. Um, and then uh, I'm gonna have it go to context clue and the method I just created was change context. So now I only have one of these and I'll hit play and let's test it out and just make sure it works. So here we go. There we go. Oh, 
Oh, it's, it's hitting both for the two different colliders. So what I want to do really, really fast is take a look at that sign script here. So scripts, sign, and if other is player, and uh, other not other dot is trigger. There we go. So we don't want to do it for the trigger one. And same thing here. And not other dot is trigger. There we go. So this was just an example of me wanting to get stuff done. And so I thought of a way to do it. And I just did that without thinking of some easier ways to do that. And we're going to talk about this next time with um, some structure of our project work. Um, I haven't done a great job keeping the structure good. Um, OK, so it starts out false. Um, and then hmm. looks like it's doing the exact opposite here. Oh, it's because of the signals. Good Lord. James. Um, okay, so the reason it's still doing that is I need to change my signals. I should only have one signal here for it, not two, and I'm just going to call this signal context. And then when we enter, we're going to do context.raise. And when we exit, we're going to do context.raise. It's because I deleted one of the, one of the signals. All right, cool. So I'll go back to Unity here. And in my scriptable objects, I'm going to delete one, well, whichever one is still on the player. Eh, come on now. There we go. So it still has context clue off. That's weird. All right. I'm going to delete context clue off because that one doesn't make any sense. And go to my player. This goes here still going to do that, but my sign here is going to raise this signal. There we go. That was way more complicated than it needed to be, but I don't know. Sometimes you guys like it when you see me make mistakes because I am far from perfect. There we go. That's better. All right. So there's just one, just one context clue there. And the, like I said, I was just thinking on off and so I made two separate scripts when I totally could have just made one so yeah um, if you have any questions feel free to ask down below um, you can follow me on Twitter to find out when I post new videos you can join my discord where I've been chatting every day but it's starting to become a really pretty cool community there so if you have questions about stuff and if I'm not there usually somebody's willing to step up and take a shot at an answer, or maybe they've had a similar issue before. So it's a cool community to join. Um, let's see here. Uh, I'm going to start a Patreon at some point in time. Hopefully that's not going to be too bad. I thought about making stuff for Udemy, and I might still do that in the future, but I'm not going to do that right now. So yeah, uh, if you have any questions, feel free to ask, and everybody out there, have yourselves a wonderful day.